Hey Rockers, welcome to Mamaology Psychology, where you get to peer into the minds of the owners of Mama Rocks Burgers. We're bringing you into our world, where we talk all things business, lifestyle, and our psychology. Hi guys, welcome to Mamaology Psychology, where we delve into the mindset of Mama Rocks. Today, we're at episode six now, aren't mm, we? Mm. And it's all about, um, we've called it Black expectations, black expectations. That's a it's all about blackness and our perspectives on blackness. And we all have different perspectives because we're all from different regions of the world. So I'd love to introduce our guest today, <laughs> Jackson. Hey, Jackson. How are you doing? <laughs> so why don't you introduce yourself? Tell, tell us where you're from yes. and yeah, a little bit, bit about yourself. Okay, well, thank you guys for having me, first and foremost. My name is Jackson Cooper. I'm 34 years old from Columbus, Ohio, mm -hmm. currently in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, and I'm just happy to be here and ready to talk this Black Expectation Ooh. Tour. So you're visiting us. You're visiting, visiting Kenya. How long have you been here? I've been here for about three months now. Okay. And um, it's beautiful. Uh, Kenya is a beautiful place. I wish more people that look like me where I was from would come mm -hmm. and visit. But that's my purpose for being here is mm -hmm. to bridge that gap. So yeah. I'm ready to get started. Awesome. Yep. All right. So um, I'm from, obviously, everyone knows that Natalie and I are from the UK. And, and um, Moses wanted to give his, ex his experience of being um, African, um, being the, the black experience in Africa, which is, yeah, it's a nice topic to hear about as well, actually. Interesting topic to hear about. Mm. Like, if there's a black experience in Africa, since we are all yeah. black, people are asking, is there a black experience in yeah. Africa? And there is, yeah. there is a black experience being in Africa. Yeah. I'm going to jump in and say something really, really trivial. Growing up in UK, Smart for I, I think there are expectations. I, I can't speak for black Englishmen out there. Can I speak for myself? Um, so I remember, remember I came home one time, and I'm sure maybe the young'uns out there won't remember, but do you remember HMV? Do you remember HMV? No. I don't, oh, think, wow. they, I don't think they had that in America. You don't? Okay. What, what is that? What HMV is that? was a, a music store. Oh, Very famous yeah. music store. Before we had, you know, your <laughs> Apple Musics, right? You mm. actually physically went to the shop and you bought CDs. Mm. Yeah. So I was in university at the time or college. What do you call it, Moses? We call it university yeah. or college. <laughs> yeah. We were taught English by the same people who colonized you. But anyway, proceed. We have different isms. <laughs> yeah. so I to make sure. Yeah. So I went to HMV and I just got my paycheck, where it might have been like 2000 Bob. So I was really excited. I'm like, I'm going to buy my CD. I'm going to buy my music. So uh, it was the same time when Lauren Hill's album was out, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Yeah. But Great I wasn't album. that kind of, yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah, so you weren't I went, there. <laughs> I wasn't there yet in terms of my <laughs> musical taste. So I picked up Pink's album. Uh, I think it's called Misunderstood. Yo, 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 See, yo, yo. Like, wow. what was oh, that expression? Wow. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> you picked Pink over Lauren Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I picked, I picked, I picked. <laughs> I picked Pink's album, Misunderstood, and um, I picked up the soundtrack to Romeo and Juliet, which is very kind of eclectic and classical music, right? So I went to the till to go and pay for my CDs. And the guy behind the counter was also black. He was black British. And he looked at me, just how you look just then. <laughs> he kind of went, okay. And he said, are you sure you want these? I said, yeah, I, I want them. Why, why would you say that? He goes, you know, Lauren Hill has a new album and it's really, really good. I was like, yeah, I know that, but I want these ones. And then he said, you know, Pink's musical tastes have changed, right? Because Pink's albums prior were very kind of grounded R &B, in R&B. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And I was like, yeah. And he just gave me this weird look where I, I felt really out of place. And yeah. I feel like the expectation, mm. because I'm, I'm black, that I, I should listen to r and I should listen to hip hop. Yeah. And they're all great musical genres. And but you should choose Lauren Hill over yeah, Pink. Yeah, like, I should choose. It's like, <laughs> Because you should. But I oh. actually you should have. But, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, but not because, not, but not because of the blackness, but, but well. Yes, because of the blackness, yes. Okay. I, I, yes, yeah, because. Do right, you need to explain Are you judging now. me, Moses? Yeah. Yes. Now you need to explain yourself. I explain. am judging you. <laughs> okay. Because I can see how, uh, since I'm judging you, how shallow you are. <laughs> shallow? <laughs> yeah. So She's as in a, pink over Lauryn Hill. But music is music, no? 
Yes. Mm-hmm. No. What do you think, Jackson? Yeah, but, but then, are you judging me by no, your like, expectations? Finish your story. Yeah, finish your story. Finish yeah, your story before you, we uh, jump yeah. in. So yeah. when I bought the CDs, I got home and I put the pink album in, and he was right. So I realized that she had changed her musical direction. <laughs> and I, more rock, I didn't right? listen to it again. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes I love my hip hop. I love R&B. Mm. You know that I do. But mm. sometimes it's refreshing to your ear to hear something mm. different. Not true. And why okay. should I be prejudged? Yeah. Because I'm venturing out of what people expect of me as a black woman. Yeah, yeah. Why can't I express myself in other areas? Mm. Like, why can't a black woman listen to classical music? That's true. Mm. So that's where I thought it was a bit... Um, yeah, no, no, I, I, I get you. I mean, um, yeah, people, people should be allowed to explore whatever kinds of music they want. I, I really don't see why, why people were f- trying to force you into your stereotype because of the, what, what they see of you. It's like I made him feel uncomfortable because yeah. I was choosing something that he didn't expect me. Yeah, yeah no, they, they, so choose. you're black, therefore you must fit into this yeah. this box where you like A, B, C, D, and if you if you you fall out of that. Then, then it takes then away from my black currency. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, are you gonna? Are I'm you gonna? Your explanation. <laughs> yeah, okay, there's so many layers to this. In my opinion, uh, first of all, when it comes to selling records, you, you already know how the struggle of black artists. <laughs> yeah. so, so, like, like white music will just sell because mm. it, it won't be filtered out. Yeah, they will make sure Pink's album is in every store. Yeah, but so why you're saying does, we should support our own? No, but yeah, why does everything does, I do have to be political? No, so 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 that's why I'm saying there's layers to this, yeah. Mm. So there's the supporting your own part mm. Mm. coming in, and then there's the message part, yeah. So clearly, for you, you just wanted music to feel good, yeah. yeah. Uh, but then with Lauren Neal, even with the name of the, the the title of the album, already tells you it's deeper than it's deeper than just feeling good. Mm. You understand? It's, she's mm. telling you. She's telling you she had to re-educate herself mm. to open her eyes mm. just to write this music and tell you her experience through through love and through art and through mm. culture mm. And, and, and just to grow you as a person. So when you listen to that album, you grow as a person. So there's a, a number of layers why a black another fellow black person would judge you. I'm not saying it's right, okay? It's not right to be judged for your preference, okay? But then there's a reason why you would be judged. It's, it's like... um. I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. If you have a job opportunity in your company, beautiful job opportunity, uh, you have an unemployed cousin who qualifies for that role, and then you have an unemployed friend or acquaintance who also qualifies for that role, uh, it will be, you, you would face judgment if you gave the acquaintance that position over your cousin, even though they are both qualified, because it's like supporting your own type of thing. Mm. Yes, but then this is like a Definitely. black and white thing. This is a black and white. This is pink versus Lauren Hill. They, they like, like if it was like Lauren Hill versus uh, Mary J. Now that that's now his preference, okay. But then this is more like it's a black. The black struggle steps in. That's why the dude gave you that look of like, oh wow, you're not gonna join us in the struggle. But wait, wait, wait. But wait, you're saying that she should have bought that other album, Lauren Hill album, um, to yeah, to I, I can understand if you yeah to support Lauren Hill. However. We, she should make that choice because Lauren Hill is struggling. No, I'm explaining why she got the judgment. I'm, 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 mm. I'm, I'm condemning the judgment. Mm. We are free. There's yeah. free will. Yeah. I'm condemning the judgment. Mm. But then there's, the, the reason why I reacted, why he reacted, I assume, and why the dude reacted like that is because at this point, the freedom has been taken away. Okay, Now it's, no, it's, it's like, yo, you're, gonna, you're not going to help a sister out. You're, you're not going to go listen to this message. You're going to choose... Pink and the music has changed. And just like you said, you went and had the album once. You didn't <laughs> listen to it again. Yeah. It, 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 so you proved, to, it, it proved the to point. Open, but okay, I hear what you're saying. But at the same time, do you not think that we put, as black people, put our own black expectations onto other black people, which could stifle the growth or interest in other areas that black people could also excel in? Mm. So say if I listened and I was inspired by like classical music, to the, I could be the next prodigy, you know, Mm. in terms of you know, the next black musician who mm. has mastered the violin. But because as a black person, I'm not supposed to explore that, that kind of music. No, no, you're, I could you're be okay. suppressing my own No, talent. you can explore it, but then you can explore it. Just buy the pink CD after you bought the Lauren Hill CD. <laughs> Just buy the Lauren Hill CD fast. <laughs> and then go save up your cash and then come back by the pink CD. Now you, you've expanded your, your, your library of music, but at the same time, you've, you've also gone with the culture. 
Give us your thoughts, man. I've been here biting my tongue. So (laughs) this is what I would have did. So I think with black expectation, we need representation, Mm. right? So when you bought that pink CD, and what was the other CD that you bought? It was uh, Romeo Romeo and Juliet Juliet. soundtrack. You should have still bought. (laughs) Lemon, yeah. You should have still bought the Lauryn Hill CD Mm. to show the representation. But at the same time, so that way the guy would have looked at you and said, okay, she likes this, but she's still representing. Even if you didn't want it, I would have still bought it personally, but I'm not going to judge you off of your music choice. You already do. Did you ever feel the need? Did you, yeah. Do you ever feel a pressure to represent? A pressure? Like, I don't get, but I'm, I'm, I'm wired differently. I don't feel yeah. any kind of pressure yeah. to do anything, but I'm just aware that a lot of people, it's like peer pressure. Yeah. So as a black boy, for example, I can only imagine the pressures mm. that black men go through growing up mm. or the stereotypes imposed on mm. them and it's hard to break free from that I want to hear more about that, that actually. society is created. And yeah. that's why I'm really interested, mm. Jackson, mm. Yes. what it's like to grow up as a black male mm. in America. Like yeah. what are the stereotypes like thrown upon you? Yeah. And at any point in your life, did you ever kind of challenge them or Absolutely. did it help affect, how did it affect your identity? Mm. And mm. I don't feel the need to talk about everyone. It right. can, it's your, yeah. about your experience. Of course, yeah. of course. Well, I'm challenged by that every day. Mm. Uh, to break that stereotype of being a black man, especially in America. Firstly, what is the stereotype? The stereotype is that if someone like me came into a CD store, yeah. then I'm going in there to steal. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, yeah. So it's not That's even the, the wrong CD yeah, choice. It's, true. it's to steal, it's yeah. True. So true. I have to go in there kind of with like my wallet already out with the card showing yeah. like, guys, like I'm here to buy something. Mm. Yeah. But there can be like a white guy in there. Mm suit and tie on he could be stealing everything just smiling just yeah, yeah. Like I'm this and thing. it's funny because it happens here too you see what and I mean? it's really strange so i have to go above and beyond mm. just to do like the little things yeah um so it's just really hard being a black man in america mm. but mm. i'm finding a way and that's what makes me stronger yeah so it's like a beautiful thing it's like a it's like a beauty within the war yeah. so to say okay. you know what i mean so yeah that's how i see it too it's like it's hardening us yeah. and making us stronger and tougher um, and we can take on anything. Yeah, pressure makes diamonds. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But or does it make us paranoid? Ooh. If you let it. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's it comes it's, it's like a, it comes with the trade, doesn't it? Like like paranoia. No one's born paranoid. You you get paranoid for a reason. Mm. You get me? Like like when you see all these mafia movies and the head of the mafia is just paranoid. It's, it's because he has to be. <laughs> There's people Quiz trying to kill him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 me. There's yeah. people right. So now, imagine being born in a society where the society is trying to kill you. Mm. you. You get me? You you get naturally paranoid. Mm. No kid is born paranoid. Mm. It's a it's a state of mind you acquire in the society you're in. Mm-hmm. You you just acquire it, it comes in and it helps you. But then until you reach a certain point where it no longer it no longer favors you, and then you have to now shed it off. Which is also another unlearning process. Mm. So, so uh, this, these are the experiences of being born in a society whereby everything is against you, and then you you fight, you fight, and then you break the glass ceiling. And now once you bre- break the glass ceiling, now you've entered the atmosphere of just everyone else in the world. And now you have to shed it off. Like, like I think I saw um, what's it, what's her name? Um, Jada Pinkett. Mm. Uh, she was being interviewed just the other day in another podcast, mm. and she was talking about how. She, Right now, she's shedding off the street warrior and letting in the spiritual warrior. Is that why she shaved her head as well? Like, yeah, like a, yeah, because because, cool because the street warrior yeah. was necessary when she was in the streets. Mm. If she didn't have that street warrior, she would die. But right now, in the atmosphere she is, that street warrior is no longer necessary. I love that. And if that street warrior is turned on, mm. it will actually ruin her life right yeah, now yeah. because she doesn't need that level of animosity mm. anymore. Mm. Okay, so how do, how, how do you rise above those stereotypes then? Mm. Absolutely. Well, that goes back to representation. So it's all about how I carry myself when mm. I'm in that CD store. Yeah, yeah. So like I'm showing them that I'm not stealing. I'm showing them that I'm a oh, patron. Wow. I'm showing that I'm buying the CD yeah. actually. And also, when you guys say paranoia, you can also say aware. Mm-hmm. So without me being paranoid, I can be aware that I am public enemy number one when I'm in America. Mm. I am a I am a black man. I have a beard. Walking target. Yeah, like <laughs> I am like the number yeah. one target. But it's all about how like I carry myself. So like one time I actually got pulled over by the police, right? Mm. The cop looked at my car. He was like, what is this, like a rental? Like it's really clean. I could have said... <laughs> You're not capable of clean. Nah. But me, like, like I thought to myself, Jackson, stay very humble. He has a gun and he wants to kill you. Wow. Yes, that's the, that's the, yeah, that's the plan. So I just, I just played my role, played it very smart. He was like, can't really do nothing to him. So I just gave me my ticket and said, all right, man, go on. 
See what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, it's all about representation. It's all about representing this skin color that we have the right way. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, you know what's crazy? <laughs> like maybe other people don't like feel it if, if they have a beard, but like I think people of other cultures when mm-hmm. they see a black man with a beard, it just does something to them. I don't know really? what it is. Yeah, like I, I like masculinity thing is the masculine. It's, it's like a, a black man with a beard is like, too much testosterone. It, it's it's yeah you because know, I've been seeing the videos and shit. Okay. And and on YouTube of how of how the police are overreacting yeah. to black people. Yes. And you might think they are going to arrest a silverback gorilla. It's like this being here is so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. One wrong miscalculation, I'm yeah. done. And they're so it's fearful. A, it, yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a level of fear. You can yeah. even see their hands shaking as they hold yeah. the gun. Yeah. You get me? And, and, and I think it's also a programming so on their end. Yeah, that needs is. to a deprogramming From on birth. their end that needs to happen. I think I don't know what they're being taught in those police academies. <laughs> You get me? But but I think it's a deep programming also that needs to happen on that end. Yes. Whereby I think they need to hang out with more blacks or something just to understand that. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we, have, we have no power over their deprogramming. So yeah. what can, that's why I'm really interested to know what can we do? No, but like what he said is so true. So with the whole silverback thing, mm. when they see more hair, mm. that's like a psychological mm. thing. So, but like when they see like a clean shaven mustache, that's more of a Europe, Europe, yeah. Europeanized Domesticated. look. Domesticated. Yeah. Domesticated, yeah. more calmer look. Yeah. And even though I am domesticated and calm, like I wouldn't hurt a fly. Like I'm not like a thug or anything, but they're going to think, oh, this guy's a thug. He's this and that. You don't want to fight nobody. I don't. Oh. But see, you're like, impossible with a gun. Right. So like what he said is very true. And like we have to be very careful and just tread very lightly. That's so interesting. Even though, wouldn't you say that the, the beard thing is a fashion trend at the moment? Yeah. Um, even with that, they're still, still fearful. Yeah, but see, mine isn't for fashion. It's for like health because I get bumps if I were to shave. <laughs> so to be completely yeah, yeah. honest, I just have mine for that. But the white mm. people, well, the um, certain people don't yeah. care <laughs> if, it's, <laughs> if it's for that reason. It's just see, I just see this masculinity. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it, it, it kind of feels like, also like, like, like there's something today in the society against masculinity it's yeah, like maybe. it's like there's a taming of masculinity mm-hmm. it's like it's like they need mm-hmm. us to be mama's boys yeah, to some or, or extent little boys, yeah. or, or like just just like just i i, I like a cower, like you need to cower to, yes. to society so when when so a beard is a natural state of showing that that even even when you're a man yeah like when kids get into puberty their their voice break uh, and then they start growing hair whatever whatever and so the beard is like a definite symbol of masculinity because women that's why women don't have beards can you well some do (laughs) moses can you can you identify with what um cooper's saying about having a beard and how's that ever affected you uh yeah um so you find like uh even even with the even with the police situation even here in kenya or just any authority figure when they they come at you in any way whether you are, they are right or wrong when they come at you in any way Be, once i s- step in the scene like like to address the issue uh the whole stature the whole, my whole stature they added with the beard added with the voice added with my very straightforwardness they take <laughs> it as a threat mm-hmm. yes, I, i'm just asking questions <laughs> So, and, so, and maybe maybe your size has something to do with it. Well. Maybe maybe you know I'm just because so, sometimes you, so you 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 are you, I've been stopped now here in Kenya with flying squad because they they think I'm foreign. Do you want to explain yeah. what flying squad is? Flying squad is a department of the police that that is it's a special department of the police. You know, like in America they have special departments. SWAT. That, like yeah. like SWAT and whatever. Yeah. So we we have ours is is flying squad. Flying squad okay. But they are they are dressed in plain clothes and they drive Subarus and whatnot. Wow. And, and so they just pull up. They just pull up. so they just pull up. They're the ones who, who they're like they're like SWAT and CIA combined. They also they're the ones who do the if I call, if I can call it the undercover government work. Okay. As well. Mm. Uh so so they would pull they would pull me over because they would think the, mo, not most Kenyan men look like me or dress like me according to them. Yeah. Uh yet where I come from, I feel like there's a bunch of people who look like me so i've never i've never seen myself as as, as that that but you do stand out a lot though it, like and in, in people no do notice your size yeah 
Yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> yeah. I would, I would, so, so, I would be stopped, and then I would inquire why I'm being stopped. Yes. But that just that inquiry is perceived as being rude mm. or forceful mm. because they just they judge you from what they see mm. uh, and and they're like oh are you being confrontational are you being confrontational are you telling me how to do my job type of thing and then they just start reacting oh, and yeah. at that point whatever you say just it's psh, yeah it's gone psh, 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 yeah. goes over their head it's like they don't hearing it they just want to now react mm. react react and again now i have to be like what you did like whereby you're like yo i don't have i don't want any issues mm-hmm. i'm just inquiring what's the issue mm. I just we're just having a conversation we're just talking over here but that's more about you looking yeah. different in terms of like your stature but do you have any consciousness of being a black person full stop when there's a white person in the room yeah where but you'll see um so there's this um kenya's a heavily tourist country yeah and not, not only that there's like a million ngos here Mm. And so there's this, and one. Yeah. There's, this, there's this charity thing that's been attached to white people whereby they've been uplifted as royalty when it comes to this country because of them being associated with money or, or, or handouts. Mm. And so you find that you notice how black you are when a white person enters the room, whether it's a hospital an office appointment meeting or whatever you you can see the special treatment that's gonna take place yeah. and you've been there maybe even two hours absolutely you get me so you you just see oh shit, yeah i'm in africa yeah yeah mm-hmm. and this this white people this white people heaven like they just come here and they just they just do their thing whereby when you i'll give you an example yeah there's a friend of mine who organized for a meeting in a big company and he was that means late for that meeting mm-hmm. and so when he walked into the meeting those guys were like yo uh the boardroom meeting is over you are late you booked for this meeting you're late but he came with a white partner as soon as they saw the white partner Thanks. they changed them oh yeah. you got white people with you Jeez. okay so now <clears throat> we can we can continue with this mm-hmm. meeting but before they were like shutting down like no 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 no, you're late you're late you you missed your opportunity and then they saw the white partner they're like, oh 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 yeah 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 Let's, Do you know what's really interesting about yeah. what you said? It's not even, say, for example, like the white people putting those expectations on us. We, we're doing that to our, to ourselves. Yes. Yes. But it's a programming that was set on us since since we were born, I guess, Be- because we were we are born seeing NGOs, we are born seeing charities, mm. and as a kid, we are just seeing white people come into your neighborhood to give you biscuits, to give you a popcorn to give you <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. sweets yeah. okay mm. candy okay mm. and you just like and father christmas that has never happened mm. with black people you've never seen a black person come to your neighborhood to mm. do for you the same kind of thing so it's a type it's of deep. conditioning mm. it's a condition yeah. Yeah. it's a condition like a trigger a mental yeah. trigger. A trigger so you have to unlearn as you go as you grow up yes. and mm. you start seeing the truth and how actually these things happen and how come the white people are able to do this because yeah. they're coming from a country yeah. where their currency is way stronger so just the average white person earning an average salary when they come to africa they're almost a millionaire mm. because literally their currency is a hundred times more yeah, powerful yeah. than ours yeah. Yeah. yeah kings yeah like what he's saying is so true like i had to speak on it like because yeah. you typically don't hear africans saying stuff like this yeah so like any like black americans watching this they're going to be like this guy is preaching and like and like this is serious because he said that people are born with that mentality. I say that it's it's really within like our like ancestry back in Black America because of slavery. Mm. So we had to deal with so much that it's like mentally ingrained yeah. within us mm. that white 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 ice is colder. Mm. Everything white is better. Mm. Think about it. People say white is good, like white light is good, but yeah. black dark is bad. Yeah. Like being at night is bad. All of this is programming. So. This is very deep stuff, what we're saying right now. And um, I want like black Americans to know that there are Africans who think just like us. Mm. And like if we can really bridge that gap, yep. like Moses here, we can be unstoppable. Mm. So that was yeah. what I had to say. I think we well, I think we need to collaborate a lot more. Um, and then, you know, in general, I feel like there's a lot that can be done um, to open people's minds. Um, 
but uh, yeah, we need. I, I think, think it, it, we it, it, we don't realize that we have so much in common. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Because yes. it's it's that's it. That's it. That's it. Right of, there. Yeah. That's, that's it. it. We don't, don't realize we have so much in common. Commonality. Well, mind, yeah. There are commonalities. Yeah. Between what Moses is saying and what yeah um, Cooper's saying. Yeah. yeah. But it's just so rare. Like I like I'm telling you guys, it's very rare to hear Africans say mm. what he just said mm. because. We have to be honest. We have some Africans who have been whitewashed. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, majority, majority, mm. the stereotypical African yes. mm. has been brainwashed, whitewashed. I don't know how we're going to put it. Yeah. But, but the stereotypical African doesn't think like this because they're not required to think mm. like this. Is that, so like, I feel like in, in black Americans, because of the, the racism on your face, the on your face racism, you're Every forced... Day. Every You're day. kind of forced to wake up from that nightmare of, 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 of like, these guys are better than me. But for us, because it's not on our face, because the oppression is happening. Yes. The oppression we are facing of what I would say, the racism oppression is being done to us by our own people. Mm. So therefore, you don't really see the white person as a perpetrator or the colonialist as a perpetrator of all this. So for you, as far as you're concerned, white people are okay. Mm. Uh, which, which now in today, today's terms, majority of them are because they don't have that, 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 that mentality that their forefathers had. Mm. But then now the programming is too late. The programming is already set. Now, we, we have so many stories. We even had an episode, I think it was the previous episode, where we were mm. talking about dating. And this chick, this chick was talking to this white dude on, on Tinder. And the white dude is like, yo, let's meet up in Mombasa. Okay. Let's meet up in Mombasa. <laughs> yeah. And then he met up in Mombasa yeah. in a hotel. And the white dude was like, ah, you don't look like your picture. And just left her in the hotel room. Oh, wow. uh, it just, just left her there in wow. the, the hotel. She get and then I, my argument was like, yo, if this dude was black, this chick would not have taken that she, risk. She wouldn't have trusted him. She right. wouldn't have trusted him. That's but, very true. But then it's the programming of of like, yeah, but he's white. He got me. Mm. White got, is right. Yeah, yeah. He, he got me. He has yeah. the cash. Because he's white, first full stop. Mm -hmm. He has the cash. So you, you, you find like there's even a lot of uh, Caucasian poor people who come to Africa. <laughs> But they will get such special treatment because of the color of the skin. So it's not like they're actually rich. Mm. But now it's a programming that's so deeply set in us, whereby as long as they're white, you can give them these services. Yes. And, and even if they don't have the cash, it'd be like, we'll oh, just treat them it's an accident. Yes. To, to yes. their own. Because, we, yeah, yeah, because of money. Yeah, so they don't get the same, same treatment mm. from other blacks as the blacks would give fellow blacks yeah. like one of the things when i came here was racism was something that i never thought i'd have to challenge yeah um and it's been a battle for us like in our own restaurant we've had um you know people come obviously and eat because it's a restaurant and they might be caucasian yeah and our staff would completely neglect the black africans this doesn't happen anymore and by the way. address <laughs> The Caucasians, despite the training that we've mm. given them, that everybody is mm. equal. We believe mm. in equality, right, of yeah. treatment and service, mm. to, irrespective of where you're from. Mm. So we've had to really have a reprogramming um, of, of people's mindsets because our staff believed that uh, black people didn't have as much money. Or they don't tip when, in fact, that isn't actually true. Mm. But it's a perception. And it's been how, how do you think that those uh, beliefs can be conquered? Yeah, because mm. I don't have the answer. And this wow. yes. is against the program because <laughs> they have to have belief people have to have belief in themselves yes but on top of that and love and love themselves yeah sorry come on come on but also like um the the tipping thing yeah it's a western culture thing yeah it's not like it's not it's not, a, it's not african culture to tip waiters yeah, so true. whether even if I'm a, I'm a millionaire african that's a good point and it's not in my culture it will come automatically like if if i would remember i would like oh yeah yeah you gave me great service Here's a tip, but then it's not it's not culturally yeah, yeah. it's not it's not a, it's even, not a culture. It's not even mm. English culture to tip. No, but in America it is. America, 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 it's very very big. Yeah, tip is very big. big. Yeah, tip is very big in it's America. expected. You go yes, to a restaurant is. and if you don't tip, you'll stare down. Like, That's right. That happens yeah. to us because we right. didn't know. Remember? Yeah, we didn't. We didn't we, know. We, we went. Didn't, we went to was it? Uh, no, it was a cab. It was a cab driver. He, uh, the cab and it took us around. I can't yeah. remember what state it was in. And at the end, he was like, "You do know it's right to tip. What you've done is really rude." And we had no awareness that that's what the expectation was. Yeah, that's the culture. I paid you for my cab there like what's the problem mm. so i do agree with you moses that yeah it is a very cultural thing mm. and maybe it's an Amer a very american mm -hmm. thing um not yeah. to mention also like the power the power of the like it's, it's, it's been done very intentionally for african currencies to be less powerful than uh western currencies mm. so 
an African Tanzania is not the same as a, <laughs> is, not, is, is not the same as is not the same as a European Tanzania. You get me? So so when when a European when a very average European person, average financially, European person comes to Africa, uh, as well remember the they've been with the perpetrated Africa in the Western country as extremely poor. Mm. Mm. So when they come to Africa, they're like, oh, we're going to even help some mm. people because when you have a hundred dollars mm. over there, it's like 10K. You understand? So, so, so you can buy all the stuff you want to buy mm. for a hundred dollars. You're yeah. going to remove some change and yeah. just give them the change. Like you, you've done, you've done your work for humanity kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you get me. But then, yeah. I, then a Kenyan is like, "Yo, this is all I got. I just mm. came to eat lunch." You get me? <laughs> I just came to eat lunch. This is all I got. I guess just came to eat lunch. So, if 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 without any kind of civic education or yeah. deprogramming, the average waiter or waitress would just would just run towards the white people because they tip as a culture. They tip one. As a culture, also they come to Africa thinking, "I want to help humanity of Africa." They are yeah. so poor; they have flies running around their mouths and Actually, eyes. Can I just say something? <laughs> right. So we have I have a gym, mm-hmm. right, where, where where I live. I hope no one recognizes this place. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> just giving yourself away. And well, I had, there was a power outage this morning, so there's no power. And I went to the management office, and a white guy walked walked in. And he was trying to find out about why there was a power outage, right? Same so, thing you're trying to find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a very different response. But anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> so they, they, were, they, they were trying to help him. And then um, at the end of the conversation, he gave them like 300 bob. He goes, oh, baby, buy yourselves a soda or something. And I just thought this is really Cheesy. strange. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe there is, I feel like, Mm. maybe I'm thinking too much but it seemed like a saviour mm. like maybe there's a saviour yeah. complex yeah. going on here Absolutely. Yeah. so then when I asked my question and I was just asking for dust like bin bags <laughs> they were like who are you like yeah. mm-hmm. where's yeah. my 300 bob mm. I'm just that's your job mm. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah, this is a bit besides the point but I don't tip unless someone has done something that's worth tipping mm. that's the way I see it like yes. yeah I don't give if you give everyone money for, for doing the basics then no, but I think that's the expectation. That, yeah, it's expectation, but I don't believe. But what it. I would really like to hear from Jackson actually yes, is, yes. having come from the states and coming to Kenya, has has your experience of being a black man changed, and if so, how? Yeah, interesting. Yeah, um, that's a good question. It it has changed. It made me look at myself a little bit differently, if that makes sense. Um, I was thinking that it would be more brotherhood, brothership here in kenya mm. you know what i mean <laughs> well so so how, how did you expect that to manifest itself man even though like like my dad told me to always have realistic expectations yeah. i was just thinking it was just gonna be hugs and just <laughs> hey brother Welcome hey yeah. well there is covid so maybe that's why yeah maybe because of covid but it just really wasn't that you know what i mean it seems like it's more love being shown to other cultures um right now like i'm doing youtube and um i I think I put out pretty quality content. If I'm you a, do. If I'm yeah. going to say so myself. Stuff. Thank you so much. We're, we're going to put your information Thank you. out there as well. On Thank the description you. below. Yes, <laughs> yes and, so subscribe now it. and subscribe to <laughs> anyway, And just right. like Moses said, I mean, there can be a poor white person mm. and they're going to look at them like, God, mm. but I could put out the most quality stuff and they're just like, okay, mm. whatever. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> so do you feel that, that we, we don't support our own? I do. Sadly, but truly, I do. But that goes everywhere. That goes yeah. in Black America. Yeah. That goes here. Totally agreed. It's everywhere. Yeah. And that's why we have to change that. That's why like, I want this video to be seen by a lot of Black Americans. Mm. Because that, the stereotype out there is that white is better. Absolutely. And like, there's a stereotype that Black Africans don't get along with Black Americans. Yes. But yes. we just met and me and I mean, like, he, he was saying stuff that I probably can't say on this podcast that is like... <laughs> real stuff guys yeah. and um, <laughs> we need to come together man that's real just really shit, what it real is shit. maybe i come to your, your i come to your youtube channel and Ab- say, oh, no, that, absolutely. I say all that shit over there just pour absolutely. my heart out absolutely <laughs> so, like, i hope that answered your question yeah no it, it does thank you but i just wanted to talk quickly sorry about supporting sorry. each other mm. and i watched a documentary i can't name it obviously 
but it was about how many times the dollar changes hands mm, in, and yeah within certain communities. communities yeah and apparently within like the jewish community or even like um mm. other nef- uh, ethnicities asians too exactly mm-hmm. the the dollar stays within stays that in community yep. yeah whereas with the black community it's it like goes straight one out. exchange and it goes straight out <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. so we really need to look inside ourselves mm-hmm. and say how can we support each other yes. mm-hmm. and that starts with supporting black owned businesses mm-hmm. yes so that we equalize the playing field to yeah. give us economic power yeah because when you come when when i analyze it i think one of you said this earlier it's also a power game and once we attain power that's when you all those things like self-love and you know valuing what yeah. is african or yeah. like, representation thank too thank you yeah, yeah it goes hand in hand and that's mm. the only way i feel like we can start to deprogram wealth ourselves. accumulation for sure, basically. For sure. We, we need to we need to it's with wealth accumulation so so like um if when when a when a dollar enters the shop of an Indian or 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 whichever or an Arab or whoever it is, before it, it leaves our community, it, it will have circulated there like nine times. Yep. Uh when it when it enters a black economy, it, it goes out immediately. First of all, uh these guys have made sure all the other cultures have made sure like they have banks that they affiliate with. You get me? Uh so 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 like you find like this bank. 70% of of the customers are all of this ethnic group uh and and they all bank there <laughs> they all bank there mm. you get me so they can so they can get loans mm. they can get uh, and that's they, how businesses <laughs> yeah, build yeah, because support. then they'll give that loan <laughs> exactly to a member of their community then they can build businesses that they intend turn support yes. so yeah that's how it works but doesn't right we have to go back to the beginning yeah. Which is we have to therefore we need to start our own businesses. Exactly, mm. they have to exist for us to be able to spend. But first, we need to Absolutely educate. Though. We need to educate ourselves. We need to educate ourselves that the stereotype put out there that uh, black is crap mm. and and white is better or foreign. Let me just say foreign because mm. right now it now cuts across all other mm. cultures. We we need to re-educate ourselves that that, that the, the the subject of black is crap. And fellow black people, yeah. like fellow black people, will 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 steal from you mm. if you do a deal with yes. them, yes. Yes. or mistrust. or they exactly. will let you down. Yes. Yeah. You get me? Like you can't give a black person a manufacturing job yeah. because the quality won't be the. Hold on one second, Moses. Okay, what percentage of businesses in Kenya, in your perspective, are owned are black owned? Mm. Mm. And we we're, we're in a That's predominantly a black country, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so now, all the big businesses, which I would say. Which I would say, like, um, uh, bringing in millions, are uh, all foreign owned, um, and then the local businesses. So, so it's like majority, like ninety five to ninety nine percent of the local businesses are black, yeah, and mm. and the foreign businesses, the 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 heavyweight businesses, are foreign. First of all, being the reason why you, you find you find like there are so many things that stifle this, and we, we stifle ourselves. If yes. I, even even as an example with now with corona with covid other countries like 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 european countries like denmark mm. or whatever okay. uh they subsidize during corona because people haven't been going to work they are subsidizing goods yeah. so wow. that people can afford yeah. Yeah. in yeah. africa we are now taxing yeah, yeah. tax has gone to man. 200% since corona tax of everything even salt salt mm. you know you, you know you, you know the economy is bad <laughs> when salt goes up in price yes okay <laughs> like 200% when salt goes up in price yeah uh but now at the same time kenya let me just talk for kenya don't don't know about all other african countries at the same time in kenya yes any cash any foreign cash coming into the country as long as that cash wasn't earned in kenya is no taxed wow you get me so <laughs> if a foreigner opens a bank account in kenya they can even bring in one billion if they want because it was earned from outside they, it's, outside it's their money they just want to access it mm-hmm. you get it mm-hmm. but yo, as a kenyan for you to get to that one billion the taxation you're gonna face so it's, it's, crazy, like, the, yeah. it's like the it's like the it's like the economy has been made to favor foreign investors yes so imagine a poor a poor local farmer competing okay. with like a huge European yeah. conglomerate. Can't. You can't. You can't. You Forget cannot. <laughs> yeah. Not to mention, not to mention, the European Union has has, has placed certain trade certain embargoes, uh, uh, yeah. certain trade embargoes on on uh, Africa uh-huh. in terms of uh, goods that compete with local goods. Yes. So uh, from fishing 
to to sugarcane mm. to yeah. farm produce yeah. let me call them farm produce farm produce is cheaper to import is, farm yeah. produce than to, buy. Than to sell Here. locally grown farm produce locally grown farm produce are taxed to the and 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 wow. and the and the, and the, and the, uh, the, the what's it called the the certificates you you need to get yeah. it's like you need to be already a millionaire. Yes, yeah, so the whole yeah. thing. So the whole yeah. thing is rigged. It's rigged. Really, yeah. Yeah. It's rigged. It's yeah. rigged. So how do I become? How does my, my, myself in Kenya as a local farmer? Is it even possible for me to scale up to compete with you the can't. big boys when the system is against me? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. how does that? How do I make that happen? And can I just speak on the farmland stuff yeah. right now? Yeah. I just heard that Bill Gates bought up like mm-hmm. half of the world's yes. farmland. Yes. yes. Mm. So I mean, why what did is he, he doing? What are you doing, Bill Gates? Yeah, like why did he do that? Like I wonder why. So I just had to throw that little tidbit in there. That's I can't scary. help but yeah. to feel a bit like something's not right is going on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, he's not a farmer. <laughs> he's not a farmer. Let's just start with the fact that he's not a farmer. You've never I mean, seen Bill yeah, farm. Zero You've never seen Bill in farming. Oh, wow. That's right. <laughs> Moses, you need to look at YouTube. It was always farming. Uh, it's really yeah, yeah. It's only Microsoft is all about farming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Get me. Jesus. But but so you you see these kind of things is whereby the the economy and the people and the culture and the the programming aka programming no matter how which direction you want to see it's like yes. pinned against you as a black person wherever mm-hmm. part of the world you are mm-hmm. yeah you, you get me yeah. also there's this thing of like as long as you're black it doesn't matter which country you land in this is gonna be Still a level of racism, yeah. racism. Absolutely, you face. It's, it's I, I've, yeah, I've experienced racism everywhere in every. Yeah. So growing up in London, um, I didn't really experience it until I matured. Thank you. So I was saying yeah. earlier to Cooper that I feel like racism is probably not as blatant in yeah. the UK as it is in US. Uh-huh. So, like you, I personally cannot recall a specific incident, but um, that's why I went like this, and I'm like, you experienced racism, like in, yeah, what, later what on. Um, so at well at school I started off um, in a very much mixed area. So I was in London, and every other person was a different color. So I didn't even recognize color. But then when uh, my family decided to move to uh, yeah. a predominantly white area, mm-hmm. I became the only black girl in my class, um, mm. and there was only myself, my sister, and one yeah. other yeah. black person, like three people who everybody assumed you guys was are my related. <laughs> Of course we're related. Of course. You're all black. I mean. Yes. <laughs> but, nice. but anyway, but I still didn't experience any racism at all. Like it was pretty blissful until, until later on. It was just little things like, um, you know, when I was, ex- when I was looking for a place to live, for example. Oh, yes. Do you remember? remember were you with now. me when yes. we were in Stratford? I that. We went to an estate agency yeah. and we tried to find a place to rent. We had good jobs and we yeah. had the right amount of money to mm-hmm. be able to afford a rent. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, this person, this agent had the audacity to ask me, are you sure you can afford this? Wow. He actually said that. Can you afford that? Based <laughs> on... Color of your skin. And I yeah. remember saying, <laughs> I'm not what looking for about. fun. <laughs> yes. Last, yeah. um, and just, just little things like that. And, and I really didn't experience it. Um, maybe until I, I experienced it here first oh wow <laughs> give, give seriously a okay give, give, so give, i give went a... to a supermarket uh-huh. and everybody um well there was a sign to say that you couldn't go in with a bag you know of a certain size but i as i was walking in a white person uh. had just walked in front of me with a bag bigger than mine oh, and yeah. a whole backpack a whole, oh, yeah, yeah. A whole this is a backpacker yep. this is a backpacker uh-huh. <laughs> yep. okay so the bag is big all the way to the roof that's right I, the, the bag right. all the way to the roof he just when I was walking and this motherfucker is, has own sandals and, and uh, he has sandals shorts you, you, like we yeah. we look well off yes. than, than the dude okay yes and I think we were I think we were we're more well off than the dude but then the, the white guy would just walk into the supermarket not go to the luggage area nothing and the guys are just like hey jumbo jumbo yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then and then to like, we, no. have our, uh, we have our laptop bags. <laughs> laptop bags. Oh, like, no. hey, hey, who do you think you are? The president? Do you know what we call that back in America, right? Uh, we call that cooning. Whenever you do like that jumbo jumbo yeah. to white oh. people, 
that's cooning. And like, I don't know if you want to bleep that out or not, but that's exactly what that is. No, so. yeah, yeah, but that's, it, it, it's still coonish if, <laughs> yeah, even here yeah, as well. Yeah, it's still, sucking up. Up. Sucking it's up. still yeah. coon, it's, it's sucking up. It's yes. sucking up. You're becoming the coon. Yes, <laughs> you are. Yes, you are. Because yeah, you're sucking up to the white man. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it is what it is. It is Jesus what it is. You know? but I think what I experienced more in London growing up in England was it, it was more black people's expectations of themselves. Yeah being project, projected onto me yeah, yeah. by black people. Yeah. Mm. So things like... Um, oh, look, you have to bring up yeah, that dating sorry, story. I'm sorry, The dating scene. Please. The dating scene Speak was quite... on your uh, experience. <laughs> <laughs> no, the... So, yeah, when I entered the world of dating, I realized that no one wanted to date mm. someone like me. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I was left Back on in the London, shelf. you're saying, yeah, I was though, left right? on yeah. the shelf. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, I, from my experience, um, all my friends were getting dates. Uh, remember, you got to remember. Your at, white friends, you mean? Yeah, at some stage. Okay. okay. At some stage, I was in a white area, then I moved back to London. Mm. But basically, me and my friends of this skin color were not getting dates, but people of mixed race who were closer to white and, and white people um, were being dated. Um, and so, you know, I, it was it's strange because it's when I was growing up, I never felt that different. And I've always been really proud of my blackness. Yes. I was telling, I was telling you how um, whenever I go anywhere with heat, I just sit there and Try to get more based, black. Yeah, <laughs> bask in the sun because I love I love my blackness. As you should. Um, but it was only it was only brought to question when I started dating. Mm. And so, for example, I went on a date one time very very few dates i had very few dates because no one wanted to date me but when i did wow, this is crazy i was <laughs> i was um i was talking to this guy and he said to me you know you sound white i was like okay okay what do you mean by that you just sound white so basically because i'm able to articulate myself yes he, in his mind, black people can't articulate themselves. Oh, they, they have too much yeah. slang. They have too much See? slang in their language. Yes. So because I pronounce my words properly, yes. he equated that, he equals that to whiteness. Mm. And yeah, I just, I, I, so basically, obviously, I hope, obviously I hope, he, walks, I hope he walks away. <laughs> Did he walk away? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember saying bye. And yeah. then, uh, yeah, never, never seeing him again. Because he's not realizing the depth of that statement. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. loaded. So, how, yes, it is. Yeah. How Dara loaded. Yeah. You know, brainwashed. Because it tells thing. you about his psychology. Exactly. And how he feels about himself. Yeah. You know, and what he thinks about, obviously, other yeah, cultures. Yeah. It's not the mm. thing. black culture in particular. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Because what he just said is, uh, you're civilized. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't expecting you to be civilized. Mm. And it black. makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, basically, yeah. and it yeah. got me off guard. Yeah, it yeah. got me off yeah. guard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what what that story told me is that there's a lot of beautiful black chocolate women in the UK <laughs> that need for men to. Yeah. I gotta Listen, visit the UK we need very to do soon. Good connection, American <laughs> men, very pretty. Absolutely, uh, there's a lot of beautiful, beautiful goddesses out there who need some love. But if you, I got okay, you. I'm sorry, I have to bring this up. Love Island, love yes, Island. love it. Yeah. Oh my God, how many beautiful black yeah. British women on Love Island? And yeah, left. The men didn't even choose them. That's the experience. And that tells me there's a problem. What? Even the black brothers and But girls then you see choose. the media perpetuates this thing of of through all this various advertising. Yeah. Uh it's, it's it's like when they want to sell certain products, yeah. So they they've created this stereotype of beauty. Mm-hmm. You know, so like growing up watching Western TV, mm. uh there was the, at at a certain point where blondes were were like all like the rage the stereotype. Yeah. 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 Well, like beauty. a stereotype of beauty yeah, yeah. True. so you, I, I'm assuming at that time the brunettes were complaining it was that was what was being sold <laughs> yes I suppose yeah. it changes all the time it changes yeah. with, but it never it never products. reflects it, ne- the, never, it comes never back says to black, people. Black, black chocolate black women are beautiful. That's never, it's never come around. Oh, the closest is Naomi. That's the closest well, one. Well, hold on. That's that's not necessarily true. Like it may be undercover because I know a lot of black men who love yeah, yeah, chocolate yeah, yeah. black that's women. That's not what's sold. Media yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. saying for, okay, for the majority. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. As okay. a media, as because you have to remember black people don't control the media. We don't. We don't control anything to be honest. Zero. But, 
zero you you so 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 we because we don't control anything so whoever is in charge mm. of the media at that point mm. that group or that person yeah. whoever it is not, they will control what people consume yes you understand so uh, behind the scenes i can imagine in the last 100 years the power has been shifting hands into into from this group to this group to this group and whatever this group feels like mm-hmm. that's what they the are, this, are. this is what we are selling yeah. this mm-hmm. is the stereotype we're selling mm-hmm. then that's what we're gonna push but what's shocking to me is i knew colorism existed in london no, it exists in yeah. america but to come to kenya and to see yeah. that the same things playing out that sh- that I, yeah. gen- I don't get shocked by much that shocked me i'm a- i'm always um a bit offended when i look on the street and see several billboards and out of 10 billboards 9.8 of them are ha- you know don't have the representative um color on the billboard so for example um you know every billboard will have basically a mixed race uh woman it's like that's there. the standard of beauty that's the standard of beauty they'll have a black man mm-hmm. but more than often than not it will be a mixed race woman or a lighter skinned woman that's rather than too. darker skinned women oh yeah that's yeah that's heavy in america yeah. because they want that to be the symbol of yeah. what the family should be. Yeah. They want it to be a black man with a white woman. Mm. You you don't really see a white woman with a black man too much, but you yeah. see that. Then you see the little mixed baby there yeah, too, so yeah. they can say that they're, <laughs> that they're making the... A Drake baby. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm a Drake baby. A little Drake baby walking yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's like very real yeah. what she's saying. So, yeah. yeah, that's true. But again, like you have to remember Kenya doesn't have its own mind when it comes to media content. it just yeah. follows, it just follows they just follows. consume whatever so whatever if if the colorism is in american uh, media and uh, european media that's the same come. thing oh. that's going to be perpetrated mm. in the kenyan media okay. they'll just follow the same suit mm. but the thing is, okay i'm sorry the black man has always been desirable wherever you go in the world the yeah. black man that's for a fact. obvious reasons <laughs> uh, i'm just being honest well, like, i've well, traveled well, a couple of places really yeah. so yeah okay well <laughs> <laughs> but it's not fair because as the black woman we there was a, a survey that was conducted saying that, okay, no offense to any of the races, but black women are at the bottom of the list in terms of desirability, yeah. along with the Chinese man. Yeah. These are facts, these yeah. are statistics, right? Yeah. But who did the statistics? Man, you know, listen, we have to remember- no, we have from, from dating apps. So they collected <laughs> the data from like Tinder uh-huh. or match.com yeah. Yeah. and black women came at the bottom with yeah. Chinese men. Yeah. Because of the programming, you have, to remember, you have to remember the majority of the population uh, fall under the programming of the media. Mm. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, so whatever the media will portray. Mm. And listen, no, but the today, media is not not saying good things about black, black men. men. The media is not, but yet they're still desirable. Yeah, why? Like because, because because the women, white know. women, because the women what? Because they know. Oh. We're just leaving it there. The women know. The women around the world know that black also, is the. <laughs> not to mention also, like like on on in terms of actual facts, like because the white woman mm. loves the black man. Ooh, man. But where did that come from? Slavery. Actually, it's probably... All right, so, all right, this is what used to happen from what I heard back in slave time. So, like, the master would go back to town, and, like, she was, like, the head of the house once the master, you know, went to town. So, she would say, man, what's that old strong slave out there doing right there? Let's go ahead and call him. Out there in the field, Ah. skin, Ah. let's go. When the husband was away, the wife was away. Gorilla (laughs) Mandinga. I want you to molest me. (laughs) No, Macy's, are you putting a white... They would molest the black men, though. Yeah. They would have them do crazy, foul things to them. Yeah, you know, you know what's even more crazier? So, the, the, at that time, because you, you saw Battle of a Nation, yeah? Oh, so, <laughs> so, the white man did so much to portray the black man as this beast. Yes. Okay? That he rapes. I like that he, word. He, he would, dress, he would <laughs> rape. The beast, white women, sorry. you need to be careful about this beast, this beast, to insert fear in the society. No, but that sounds but what enticing. You know, the more they made the black man look like a beast, the more the white yeah. turn turned on. Yeah, because they want to know what that beast is. <laughs> what kind of beast of a man is that man? Yeah, so like, so are you willing to tell me that this is the yeah. white, white woman mentality? This of man can just manhandle me and just fuck the shit out of me. That's what you're saying? Like, like he, he has the, he's born with the ability to just fuck this shit. Like, this comes natural <laughs> to this nigga. He just will grab, will just grab me and fuck this shit. This, this, this is a natural talent? Okay. Cool. <laughs> so, so, you see the reverse psychology that happened? You see the reverse yeah. psychology? No, so, yeah. when, when the master goes to town to, to work for three months, leaving, leaving the wife, uh, uh, the master's wife now, his, his wife, 
home with with the other slave caretakers whatever in so the free plantation fold. she's the head of the house she's now. gonna yeah she's okay. gonna okay yeah. i want to challenge what you're saying modern day time 90s 2000s the black woman has been very sexualized in music videos whatever it might be right mm-hmm. so why is that not reflecting in, in in real life because the sexuality of the black woman is is being looked more like almost like a prostitution mm. like like it's being like you're not seeing them it's not actually when they, when they when they show when they show uh sexy uh white guys like the what's her name Mary, Mary Monroe like uh, yes yeah like she was also classy se- so like she was sexualized touch. yeah she yeah. was sexualized but it was classy yeah uh with the with the black woman they want to explicitly I own you. no they want to explicitly show show her like as if like yo this is street pass this a Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion yeah, yeah that yeah. level of, of 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 but i like how they're owning it now yeah. uh, no and they've taken it they, <laughs> no cuz they, they were like uh, for me if, this is how i interpret it yeah okay. if you're going to portray me as a whole i might as well get uh, the most i can get own it i feel what you're saying i can get I might as well get the it's, it's the same thing with uh, all these gangster rappers mm. if you're going to portray me as a gangster i might as well get every every cash <laughs> I can get out this like okay so this this is my way out yeah. this is my way out That's very true because your way out as a black man is financial freedom Yes mm. you understand Yes financial freedom is your way out as a black person yeah. So if that if your way out is to portray is to play the character they're mm. giving you So you just look at it as a role like you're, you're mm. in a you're in a you're in a long ass movie that's <laughs> lasting but, 10 years But part of it okay? is a, part of it is a movie right so you were saying that it's a, it's it can be a front in a way like you know your 50 cents they portray or even Rick Ross they portray this mm-hmm. gangster image mm. but in reality that's not they're not really like that at all mm. like, if they were like that own... they would be in jail yeah, yeah. if they if they're actually slinging dope but what they would be in jail no, <laughs> yeah. but what are your thoughts on that like it's like you're perpetuating the stereotype the negative stereotypes mm, yeah. about being a black man and you're profiteering from it in a mm. way because if you sing anything conscious it won't be played Remember even when Kanye released uh, Jesus Walks. Right. Uh, he says but yeah, so I can sing about this and that but if I yeah, but rap just... about Jesus I can't get airplay you think my record what? won't sell that's mm. what, in Jesus Walks he said if I mm. So it's still thing... selling out though. Huh? That's still selling out. What is? Well not well yeah. but doing, doing the thing that you But, but yeah, let me ask be. you. Let me ask you though. Let me ask you. I have a question about selling out. Okay. Um w- w- which one is better to not sell out and remain a slave quote in quote or to sell out get your freedom and then come pull your people out i was just thinking about this i was really just thinking about selling yeah. out like <laughs> <laughs> that sounds crazy that sounds nuts but no seriously i was really thinking about it like jackson would you sell out like yeah. say like coca cola was yeah. like hey we want you to drink this coke but you're on like a plantation or something but like <laughs> but like we're going to give you 50 million dollars yeah. i was like jack <laughs> what would you do yeah i'm telling you know you, what's man. crazy you know how much 15 million would do for my community for my family million and everything but then i thought this uh-huh. you know how much it would do to tear it down so then i was like jackson i can't sell out man money money can't do that for my people yeah so i i feel like there's a line there's a line of um there's a line whereby you can cross and you can't cross so there's a, there's a line you can't come back from absolutely i feel like if you can come back from it do it even if it take you five years <laughs> right even if right, it take right, you right. come back like like you know when when what's the name of the the big black actor who did the uh, planet of the apes <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure there was a big black? There was a big black, and, and he was, he was he was put in that monkey suit, literally. What? I don't know. Oh, I forget his the name. Green Mile. Um, Michael Clark Duncan was he in it? Michael yeah. Clark Duncan. It had to be him. Yeah. Yes, the guy who played John Wayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He yeah. died, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, he died. Yeah. Rest yeah. in peace yeah. to Michael yeah. Clark Duncan. Yeah. So I remember, I remember uh, uh, Steve Harvey uh, talking, oh, and he was cool. Steve Harvey was like, so, Steve Harvey was like, so I was talking to this dude. I was like, so yeah, so we just decided to go bring the black community down, yeah, and take that role. Mm. Uh, and the guy was like, yeah, I was just doing my job. I was like, so how much did they pay you? Four like, million dollars. Four million dollars. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. And then Steve Harvey, was, even Steve Harvey was like, if it were me, I would be on my ooh ooh ah. Oh wow. On my ooh ooh ah. She don't know. We know he be, would. Be, 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 because it's something you can come back from. It's something you can come back from. Yes. yes, yes you yes. just go back to your community <laughs> and be like, yo, I'm sorry, my bad. But I got four million dollars. I got four million dollars. Even your mother would be like. Ah, right, cool. cool. Okay. You, you, There you, you go. go. <laughs> yes, me. But then there's other ones where you once you cross that line you've gone you can't come you've gone, back. You're gone. You, you yeah. can't come back. Yes. Who mm-hmm. is the guy behind Medea's wedding? What's Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So I feel like Tyler Perry fits into your 
B option. So he, I feel like he has kind of sold out, but he's using it as a platform to, to empower. empower how, how, yes. how has he sold out though? How has he sold out though? How? Yeah. By perpetuating stereotypes in every single film. The stereotype is very real in his neighborhood where he grew up. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, it is, it is, but he takes it to that. No, but he takes it to like a mm. you must, like, there's a different level. Yeah. yeah. But but then what's the difference between that exaggeration and Seinfeld? I'm gonna respect Tyler Perry because he's black. <laughs> I, I, I feel like in every in every especially when it's comedy. Okay. Comedy is is like the extreme end, like at, at, at the end of the spectrum. Mm. There's comedy and then there's horror. Okay. And then in between here we have drama dramas action movies mm. but then at the end of the spectrum we are comedies over here that's why comedians make very good horror actors yeah, yeah? But, like they, they hmm. so, so there's you, you see the horror movies we watch are pure exaggerations like no one no, when, when you see all these haunted houses they're not done no, it's, it's Moses, more play Moses, with art Moses, <laughs> if you look at eddie murphy he also does that time comedy mm-hmm. but for me it, it, it hits differently to tyler perry what is it about right? medea Whoa, that, hold, hold on she yeah, just on. mentioned eddie murphy yeah. so Eddie Murphy's a legend for one reason to me. Mm. He made movies that specifically show black people in a good light. Boomerang. There were no white people in Boomerang. Mm. And if they were, they were waiters. They were people helping us. And he takes ownership of every project. He owns every project. Eddie Murphy is the epitome of the way a black man should handle mm. himself when it comes to Hollywood. For me, he, yeah, like you said, I, he showed that it can be done. Absolutely. You know, just you know that is powerful. Very. Just showing it can be done because we we need we need people we can look up to. Representation. Definitely. So yeah, but, but he's I'm awesome. saying the way he played with comedy. In, yeah. I can't remember where he's like dressing up with different people. Yeah. Mm. And he's in, in the Coming black family. America. No, no, no. Okay. What's um, it called? Um, Maddie Professor. Yeah, Maddie yeah. Professor. Uh-huh. Yeah. So he had like the auntie and the mother figure. And they were exaggerations, but yeah. they weren't. It wasn't the same kind of exaggeration as, as a Tyler Perry. They weren't caricatures of people. But what about the big mama stereotype? Because that's even Martin Lawrence has done that. This big mom, and that's what that's where Tyler Perry is yeah, coming from. Yeah. I, coming would, from I would put him in the mama. same blocks as, as Tyler <laughs> yeah, Perry. This, I didn't mention this big mama uh, big stereotype. Mama. This that, eating that, chicken that annoys me. That, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This 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 uh, <laughs> color greens and <laughs> it's and, like mammy and, 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 yeah. and chicken and fried chicken. <laughs> And watermelons. I wa- See? Yeah, 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 okay, but at the same time, right? I, I, I'm not perfect. So if I meet a Nigerian and they say I'm a vegetarian, yeah. I will make that You're face shocked. like, yeah. What? <laughs> because Nigerians make stew with 10 different meats inside of it. Yeah. For wow, you to say know. that you, you don't eat meat, for me, mm. makes you like invalid as a Nigerian. I think we all have our minor little stereotypes in the back of our heads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think that's that's what very true. Really, that's very true. Here's the thing, because... I was with you in terms of I, I was in terms of Tyler Perry like ah, I know the guys are sell out whatever uh, but then I just sat down and thought about it. like this is a person who tried to penetrate the market and he couldn't mm-hmm. and so he found a niche a niche that he could he could because remember how Tyler Perry started he was do he would do this this the same stuff he's doing now Plays. on stage yeah yep, mm-hmm. on stage acts in his neighborhoods in black neighborhoods mm-hmm. they would be sold out. Mm-hmm. In black neighborhoods, before he blew up in the mainstream media, yes. he they, they, his shows were selling out in black neighborhoods. So he has a black point. people were supporting this stereotype. Yeah, no, you get me? You have a point. We're, we're hypnotized. Yeah, and, to and black people also. Some black people also believe in the stereotypes. No, but is it, it was. What, it, I yeah. feel it was all lights and laughs. Like it was. It wasn't that serious to begin with. Just theater. He has a point because I think that they were supporting him because he was a black man trying to do something positive. Mm. That's why I think they the supported him. It was funny too. It was kind of <laughs> funny, I <laughs> guess. The for guys some were people. watching the shit was funny. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me, you see, you see. For example, uh, as a film producer, I have yes. my opinion opinions on uh, telenovelas. Okay, but that doesn't mean they don't have an audience. Yeah, they do. very true. true. You get me? So, so I would put he's he's working that category. Yeah, so he's a televangelist like category, cheesy, like cheesiness. <laughs> no, that no, yeah. I'm not trying to take away his success. I'm saying that he did something very important, and that he's created that example yes. for black people, and he has an empire. No, I can't take away from that. Mm. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying he started off, in my perception, as kind of like selling out, but then yeah. he's, he's turned that around. Because he spread the opportunity. Yeah. And now yeah. he's creating heavy employment in the black. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All is, uh, sure. it's, it's rare to see even other races in his <laughs> productions. <laughs> from, from, yeah. from the cast to the crew. It's all black. Yeah. All black. So you, you find like, it's, it's like a, you, if, you, if you are aspiring wherever person in the film industry, 
you can easily get a role in a Tyler Perry, whether it's crew or cast, and then use that as experience for you to step up into now Hollywood. Mm. Because now you are, your CV is your CV is because in my understanding, his his productions don't have that much of a budget. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> some of them. Yeah, but he's, he's <laughs> been criticized for that. So People have picked up for like the bad wigs and yeah. the lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Face yeah. <laughs> running jokes. Face running jokes. The joke. brains. The brains. <laughs> But no, when I was in Atlanta, I went to the Linux Mall and I did like a public interview with like people. So like I had to ask some girls some questions. Okay. And like I would ask them like, where do you work at? Yeah. Like four of them were like, oh, I work at the Tyler Perry Studios. Oh, I'm like, damn. what? I'm like a production assistant. I'm like, so he he is giving jobs to the oh. community. Like we can't knock that. Exactly. <sighs> I, I want to do something he's, he's similar. He's a great example. Yeah. yeah. We Sorry. actually need more people like yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. I want to do something similar here in Kenya. Yeah. And, and it won't be Hollywood budgets. You get me? Because I'm starting up. But I want to I want to introduce that level of production value, that level of a Hollywood studio whereby we have ten projects going on at the same time. Yes, and all of us are doing our own thing. I'm I'm hiring Kenyan crew, Kenyan cars, <clears throat> and all that. Now, if you're gonna sit there and judge me like oh production value or mm. the storyline was right. cheesy or whatever, mm. and then you're you're just gonna overlook the whole positive element. You're just gonna judge me on the story alone. You know, mm. you're not looking at this thing holistically. No, that's what I'm saying. That's, you're serving yeah. a greater purpose. That's what I'm saying. It's a hard yeah. question to answer so that's what changed my mind that's it. what changed my right. mind with yeah. Perry. because i used to of be of the same thinking of like yeah, oh, these guys a sell out uh they they all the movies are very stereotypical yeah. yes there's no neighborhood that's this cheesy. <laughs> but don't you think that <laughs> that's movies real, have, a, have a big role to play in creating those stereotypes absolutely in the first place? That, if, that kind of filter out into society i think that's how a lot of africans have their perception of black Americans yeah. is yeah, from actually, movies. 100, 100% and music videos. Mm. And I had to change that a little bit. They're like, so you don't dance around like Puff Daddy and all that? No, oh, I don't. You don't break don't. dance? You, what do you mean? So you're not a rapper? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, you, you don't freestyle? You but, don't freestyle? But, 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 but Cooper, crazy, man. But Cooper, can you dance? I can dance. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but that's another stereotype right there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But every community has a stereotype. That I can also exactly. swim too. I'm sorry. But <laughs> oh, I, I can swim. <laughs> so go ahead and the swimming thing, though, is a, it's a black stereotype that happens to be true, though. No, a lot not. of black people no. don't know how to swim. It's not, yeah. but that's because I realize I think that's because of the stereotype. Mm. And also, mm. can I just say something and about the whole like swimming, whole hair swimming thing, right? Afro hair is not the easiest oh, yeah, yeah. to control, <laughs> right? Exactly. Right so even in the Olympics right now, <laughs> someone tried to pass through a, a swimming cap that you can fit like braids oh, under yeah. and it wasn't submitted it's in time. Regulated. So it was rejected, yeah? yeah. So there's certain mm-hmm. really weird barriers between mm. myself and the swimming pool. Yeah. And I'm not the only one. A lot of black women experience that. So of course, naturally, we're not going to just dump it, jump into a pool. But the, mm. I think the what I was told when I when I was growing up was that black people have denser bones. Or I was told that so by my biology you know, teacher. Well. Yeah, your biology <laughs> teacher told you that, right? Yeah. But then also this this hair thing and swimming is because of the Western culture and uh, because no, because no, they, they, they brought in the no. I, I just want to ask, yeah, they 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 before 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 colonization. You understand yeah. that black people are in swimming. I'm saying that. Weaves do you know what it's like? Have weaves if and I, all no, this if stuff. I jumped into a pool yeah, yeah. with Afro, my 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 Afro hair, uh-huh. yeah, mm. I'll be in pain for the next three hours trying to sort it out afterwards. Mm. That's 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 because you're trying to. Comb so I'd rather it. not. That's what, what. So I just I just leave it. And it's, I just, it's not Afro. Afro. I'm just saying it's, yeah. it, it is it is a state of hair that has come with westernization. Mm, that is true. not naturally yours. True, true. You know, so that's true. of true. hair yeah. is not naturally you are here. Yeah. You're trying to perpetrate what the media yeah. has told you how your hair is supposed to mm. look like. Great point. Like. But subconsciously. Great point. But before that, I'm, I'm assuming all <laughs> black women had either short hair or dreadlocks. Okay? Yeah, dreadlocks. And yeah. so yeah. you just you just, just jump in. Yeah. You just yeah. jump in and swim. That's yeah. very true. I take that back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, if you look at uh, most of the um, the guys at the coast who swim a lot, their hair is actually curly. Mm. Yeah. Their hair is And curly. actually, the water reinvigorates yeah. the, the water, curl. So mm. Ocean water yeah. reinvigorates black hair. Yeah. Did you know this? Yeah. I need to jump in the ocean. You need to go, <laughs> go see, go see, go see the hair texture of all the, especially the beach boys. They and have the, the best fishermen. hair. Beach the boys fishermen. have the best. Yeah. The beach boys and the fishermen. Yeah, yeah. On the coastal yeah. line. <laughs> Which was at the best, yes. <laughs> the beach yes. Boys. Yes. Yes. Like, yeah, you're, you're snitching on yourself. Boys, I was bro. gonna slide over where are you beach boys? Yes, no. yes. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on. That's crazy. But yeah, so so I feel like all this is a perpetration of of what the media has sold us, mm. 
what your hair should be, what you should be, what everything we're talking about right now is this black expectations things is all the media. Yes, and absolutely. How we don't control the media, so yeah. therefore the media controls us. Yeah, and tells us what should we should be. So we should take what control. We, be. we should we should have start have our mm. own media. Yeah. Get me? We should yeah. take control of the media or yeah. recreate our own. Yeah. So like they keep saying, if they won't allow you on the table, create your own table. Yeah, it's true. Mm. You, you get me? And, and then just start, and that's 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 what I'm trying to do with currency media. Mm. Currency media is my company, mm. by the way. So okay, beautiful film production company. And th- that's the plan. The plan is to start putting out enough productions that is from my point of view. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You get me? Because that view matters. Mm. It, it hasn't been seen. It hasn't been spoken about. It's not even recognized. Yes. It's not even yeah. acknowledged. You haven't been value. given a platform, <laughs> so you're creating your own. You're creating your own. Yeah. Yeah. And, but let me say, but that's what's beautiful about Mama Rocks, though, because that like really brought like a smile to my face. Like I'm sitting there because like I had to do some research on you guys. You know what I mean? Before <laughs> I came up here. And just seeing two black sisters mm-hmm. owning the best of something in a big city. Like Nairobi's a big city mm-hmm. and you guys have the best burgers because I've looked at reviews. Everybody's saying Mama Rocks is the best. Mama Rocks is <laughs> the best. It's the best burgers in the world. Not even just in Nairobi. Man. And you know what I was thinking? Because I was thinking that I'm like, Jackson, like you've like eaten burgers at other places. Like I've like I've like been to some places, and Mama Rocks yeah. is up there, guys. Oh, like it's it's, it's some of the best burgers in the world. And this just wants me to like tell like my dad, like when I get back, like mm-hmm. dad, like I met some met some black sisters. Mm-hmm. But you know what's funny? Who own something? No one at the beginning. No one before we started showing our faces. No one believed this was a black owned business. Isn't that sad? It's very sad that. People thought, okay. They thought it's it, a franchise yeah, yeah. that they've, they've from come they're from the UK. They yeah. chose a UK franchise that they've come to introduce yes. to Kenya. Yeah. And it yeah. could not be run by black people. They, so, but that's that tells you something. That tells you something about how we as black people see ourselves as well. Like we, we cannot believe that this can be produced by our own. Do you know what we're missing? Role models. Mm. Yes, for representation. Sure. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's Actually, what we're that missing. Was, that was also part of this podcast um, about, in our view, the individual opinions. Who is your role model, mm. and are there any black role people who look like you mm. who you aspire to be? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Sadly, enough for me. Yes, they are, but they're not. They're not Kenyan or African. They're mm. all Black Americans. Yeah. Who is one? Who is one? Give us one. Uh, the, my role models. They, they are, they're all in the the hip hop community. So there's Jay Z. There's Fifty Cent. Uh, even Tyler Perry is a role model. If mm. you ask me, Spike Lee. Mm. Yes. Uh, um, um, uh, the list goes on. Of all this, all these Black entrepreneurs right mm. now. Who are breaking through, mm. uh, but through Hollywood because they have access to Hollywood. Look but at then Rihanna, the, billionaire mm. right, Rihanna now. right now. Rihanna, Rihanna is killing it. Yes, yeah, she is. She's showing everybody how it's done. So, yes. so now you find Black Americans have role models, mm. Black role models, mm. showing us that you can be whatever you wanna be. Yes. Yeah. As Africans, we don't have that. We have few. Yeah. We have very few. Uh, the Dan Gotes and the Strive Mas Yiwas, but then they they almost. They're the older generation to the point where yeah. by us we don't relate can't to them. Connect mm. to them anymore. So, yeah. so it, it's it's like I have to grab the the bull by the horns yeah. and be like, okay, then if I can find the role model, then you're the role model. Yeah. That's it. And I, I think I think that's where we're at. That's, as, where, that's where we are at as well. Exactly. Like. Exactly. Beautiful. Um, but I do feel like there are there's space to to create a platform for these role models. There are people out there doing great things, but they're, they're not being highlighted. And maybe part of that is because as black people, we need to celebrate ourselves more. Mm-hmm. It doesn't happen. Um, we don't shout out enough, shout out a- about people, you know, doing great things in our communities. Um, we're not celebrating people enough but then so that see- people don't hear those stories. Yeah, but that's why I find those really positive strange. stories. Moses, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I can talk about Nigeria a bit from what my mum's told me. But I thought that a lot of African um, um, cultures are based on community and supporting each other. Mm. Whereas I feel like, and that's how I feel role models arise because in each community, there must be one somebody who's elevated or celebrated. Yeah? yeah. And I think over time it's been eroded. And that's why you're saying that the Dangotes are the mm. ones, the names that are reference points. But mm. even if you put in Google now, you Google, um, African um, uh, heroes. Hero. Yeah, it goes back to the 1600s. Yeah, mm. or like the Dangote. There's nothing. No, it doesn't. You know it what doesn't. it does? Because I've looked recently. It, what it does is, it's all American content. 
in black like America. All, uh, yeah. It's all about when you write to African heroes, black, American, black heroes. American heroes. Even if you put African Ameri- yeah. if you put African heroes, you still you still get all the American stuff. So yeah. let First. me start with this. Let me start with this. Yeah, mm. there 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 um there isn't enough African literature mm. out there. Uh, just in the internet. One, two, the algorithm of Google how it's set up. Yeah. Will 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 first will first bring you every other continent, yeah. and then Africa. Yeah. Dang. So, even if you're in Africa, so, even if you're in Af- Africa you find, looking for African content, it will bring you every uh, you, everywhere. Else. You can try yeah. to Google your neighbor can be a billionaire and try, <laughs> you're trying to Google your neighbor, uh, and, and your neighbor won't come up on the Google search. Yeah, but, but then, then don't you think it's on us? Like ownership yeah. of that. Why are we not putting us to do that? But, that, people on there. but here's because. the thing also, here's the thing also, um, I feel like, I feel like uh, even the, the few billionaires who are there, they're just doing their own thing so much that you, you don't even know about them unless mm. you're in their industry. So yeah. it's cement. But it's their duty. It's their duty to, to put themselves out there. Yeah. I'm sorry, but it is. That's because what I, that's be, what I've always said. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like the, we need to have a lot more self-made, self-made yeah. uh, millionaires. Mm-hmm. Se- yeah, self-made role models. Yes, yeah. Yeah. who just come up from the mud and just go and just break the glass ceiling. And whether whether they like it or not, this publicity just comes with it because mm. they've they've done certain feats that was not expected of them. Yeah, you get me because the the, the, the certain a gravitational pull that it just comes to. Just comes to self-made people like like when you when you blow up even musicians like genuine mm-hmm. musicians who blown up mm. who didn't have a cosign they from the grassroots level they were like their name was just yeah, vibrating they supported like, from the ground whether up. the gatekeeper supports you or mm. not it's, 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 yeah it's unstoppable regardless it's unstoppable. Like, you're making so much noise yeah. Yeah. like your name is being yeah. mentioned by your story everyone. will be heard That's That's point, yeah. like, it's inevitable yeah. Yeah. like like you you are it was destined for you to come out mm-hmm. and Africa for the longest time because of how Africa has been suppressed economically. Mm-hmm. This has it, it's very difficult for this to happen. And now the billionaires who are there are either attached to politics mm. or corruption of some mm. sort. So they are not celebrated. Exactly. So because so it's you, all under it's like hush hush. It's yes. like on the hush. And yeah. even they themselves don't want that publicity yeah. because they know how they got there. The right. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you find you find we have all these challenges. Because our infrastructure does not support mm. you getting there in the first place. So we end up blaming ourselves like, well, when we are not supporting each other. Uh, and you keep asking yourself, like, yo, why, why, how come, how come, how come, how come? Yet you forget the infrastructure that this person is in mm. is not supporting you to come to the top. Yeah. Especially content from Africa. You can have the dopest content, but the fact that it's in Africa to even for it to even get discovered how how for it to get discovered it needs to do like 10 yes. times better mm. than a western content mm. would do yes for it to get you know that that line of uh, you have to work twice as hard to do to get half mm. of what everyone else is getting that applies in africa it applies like even like this, this we're like we need more content from africa produced by africans yeah. and the, i mean there's been a few movies over the years um american movies about mm-hmm. africa but still it's not being it's not being done from the perspective of Africans. Because the mm. people with the money who are controlling this content <laughs> is in <laughs> America. Western, <laughs> yeah. And they have their yeah. own so idea. Own of, story. Yeah, so as an as an African producer, mm. if I have content I want to shoot, they'd be like, mm. ah, so change the script to go with the stereotype of what we know Africa to be mm. like. So if I write a script about how I live in uptown Nairobi, mm. they'd be like, yeah, that's not the Nairobi we know. Yeah. Yep. What the Nairobi we know is Kibera, slums. And that's what we want to see. So, yeah. so, that, and that's so what put that in your script. Yep. Yeah. You, uh, you play Absolutely. with our stereotype. Yeah. You get me? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so as long as there's no freedom of expression, that's why I'm, I mean, we need to have our own platform. Yeah, where All right. it's not dictated. Moses, yeah. I advocate this for you for, to be the Tyler Perry of Nairobi yeah. and make the Real it's Housewives right, of Nairobi. <laughs> make some really cheesy uptown stuff real. that goes what? viral and around the world. That's what needs to happen. Well, that took a left turn. Yeah, that's I was like, like what? What? Ah, that's actually smart. But because actually that's how you get in the door, and then you could do and the then other you stuff. Do the other stuff, yeah. 
It's actually true. Because we need to change the perception, the external perception mm. of what it is. Because you're saying people are comfortable with seeing, ah, mm. oh, the Cabreras mm. or, you know, what people Tugana. are used to. So yeah. you need to break those perceptions of it's just being wildlife and animals and giraffes. Yeah. And show some uptown mm. cheesy Show some right. other perspectives. Because what the, the world <laughs> is used to seeing is just the poverty yeah. um, and the animals. That's the end of the list. But the animals are beautiful, though. They like, are. I'm just they get in all the limelight. They, they get in all like the yeah. center stage. But there's so much more. We're just saying that there's so much more yes, to be told. There's more and than to Simba. give a true reflection of this of this yeah. country and this continent. Mm. Well, oh, I just want to say that we need more Coopers in the world. And um, we need and more, more Mama Rocks sharing. and Moses. Yeah, Moses, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe oh, not Moses. Came up an yes. after, afterthought. Yeah, and yeah. Moses. And Moses, yeah. And Moses, yeah. Moses, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I forgot you're in the room. It is what it is. We have to, take, we have to grab the, the, the bull by the horns. Yeah. It's, it's up to us. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. It's up to us. We have to recognize that there's no one from outside coming to help us. Mm-hmm. We, we, this needs to sink in. Mm-hmm. This is the part that needs to sink in mm-hmm. fully. There's no one from outside coming to help you. Everyone from outside has their own selfishness. Mm. You understand? There's no one from outside coming to help us. We need to let this sink in. Mm. Uh, that, that's the only way now you start, you start pulling yourself out of, out of that hole. We need to be our own heroes and create Very our true. own paths. Yeah. Mm-hmm.